Hi and welcome to Creative Sweep TV. On this week's episode, episode 10, we have got a fantastic Photoshop cloning tip that you will never forget. Some news and product reviews. Here's Mike. Thank you for that introduction. Hi everyone, this is episode 10. Uh, I can't believe we've made it to episode 10. I am super excited. I searched everywhere around the place for a party hat. The best I could come up with was this thing here. I don't know what's in it. Wow, let's have a look. Uh, we'll see, hopefully we'll get, no, I don't know what that is. It's a plastic thing. Uh, episode 10 is not starting out well. There's usually a joke in these things. Not even a joke, but episode 10 is going to be fantastic because I think I've come up with one of my most fun tips I've ever done in Photoshop. I've got some news and I've got a product review. I reckon we do it later in the show after the tip because I am so eager to get into it this week. So without any further ado, here I am with the tip. Oh, sure, 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 you see. I know how to use the clone tool. I know how to use the heel brush tool. But I have got a very special trick for you today. We're going to use the heel brush tool, but you could just as easily use the clone stamp tool, which are just sitting right over here in the toolbar. Let me just highlight that for you, just because I like to use these little fancy gadgets that I've got. There we go. So the heel brush looks like a Band-Aid, doesn't it? So... That's the one that we're going to use. And I think you might already get the idea of my little joke here. We're going to be cloning some sheep. Ha ha. A bunch of sheep I found uh, wandering the hills of New Zealand. I would never just go ahead and start cloning these sheep. Uh, that would be immoral. No, I would always create a brand new layer first. And that is exactly what I would do. Because I want to be able to turn my sheep on and off. We'll also make sure that I have sample all layers selected. That is sample all layers up here so that when I click and sample, I'll be copying onto my new layer. So what do we do? We hold down the alt of the option key. We sample a sheep and then we can paint a sheep. You might be thinking to yourself, Mike, that sheep that you've just cloned there is about two foot, well, it's about two inches tall on that grass on the hill. You haven't quite got the size of the sheep right. Because all of these ones over here in the background obviously appear a bit smaller than what they should do in the foreground. So let's undo that. And I have got a super special tip for putting bigger sheep on this hill here, but it means we need two, that's right, two photographs. Well, it just so happens that in the background, okay, I have another file open, slightly larger sheep. Excellent. So what I'm going to do is take some of these sheep and clone them over this image. So we can see a bit better what's going on Let's go to the window menu, arrange, and we will tile our windows horizontally so we can see them both at the same time. Now, if I want to pan around in a file so I can see it, I hold my spacebar key down and I can pan around so that I can see the image. If I have two images open and I want to pan them both at the same time, I hold down not just the spacebar, okay, but the space bar and the shift key will pan both the images at the same time. And if I'm zooming, I can zoom with the shift key down and that will zoom in and out both at the same time. So the zoom control is command space bar or control space bar. And with the addition of the shift key, we'll zoom both. And then if you've got an extra finger, now I am using four fingers here, I can zoom back out 
on both of those at the same time, which is control space bar alt shift or command space bar alt shift on the Mac. And I can zoom in and out, but they're all over the joint. One's at 50% viewing and I can zoom in and the other one's at 36%. It just will not do. So we better fix this up. What can we do? Under the window menu, okay, we go to arrange, match, zoom, and location. And then we're both looking at the same thing. So again, to pan around, the spacebar will do one, the spacebar and the shift key will do both at the same time. Now for the tip. We have selected sample all layers. We have a new layer. We have both our images showing at once. I am now holding down the Alt key or the Option key. I sample a sheep from the document that is not active. I bring my cursor over my active window and I can paint a larger sheep onto this hill in the foreground. As a matter of fact, I'm going to paint a few. Let's choose another sheep there. It's a larger sheep and we can paint them in. And because I'm using the heel brush, it will paint them in nicely. And I can choose as many of these sheep as I like to and place them bigger in the foreground. And then my sheep are starting to look wonderful. So is it immoral to clone sheep like this? I don't think so, provided you do it onto <laughs> a layer. And then I can switch my layer on and off as I need to, and no pixels are harmed. So that's my tip. It's cloning sheep, and it's an awful lot of fun. Well, another great tip, another successful tip. i tell you what, if you have any requests for tips, don't be afraid to get onto my website, www.mcq.com.au, and send us an email. Uh, there is a little commenting field on my podcast uh, area under Creative Suite TV. You can send some comments there. I do read that stuff. I don't get a lot of comments and I'm starting to get a little bit worried about it. So send some comments along there. I'll read them and I'll get back to you. I'm more than happy to do that as well. So coming up soon uh, in Sydney, Australia, there is a InDesign users group meeting Monday, the 25th of September. There is a link to that off my website as well. So if you go along there, all the details are there. You do need to register for it, but it is a free event at the Australian Technology Park in Everly in Sydney. That is on Monday, the 25th of September. Tell you what, I've got another lens for my camera as part of my new product review section. I'm running out of products, but this is a beauty. I don't know whether you've seen one of these. It's for an SLR camera, a digital SLR, and it is, I'll hold it right up to my camera there. It is called a Lens Baby, and you can probably see or make out the web address on that, lensbabies.com. And what we do with this is we attach it to the front of our camera, and we can bend it, we can stretch it to focus it, and we can bend the focal area like this. It's like a little piano accordion. It creates some wicked photos. So it's a bit like a bellows camera where we can have a little bit really in focus and then the rest thrown completely out the window. It's called a lens baby and this one's for my Nikon, Nikon camera. Uh, you can get them for a whole bunch of different makes and models of cameras, but it is a beauty. It's a perler. If you go to lensbabies.com, you'll see on their website, there's a whole bunch of samples, uh, images as well. There's some from Jack Davis, who's my good buddy. So you can get onto there and you can see some examples. Thanks again for tuning in to Creative Suite TV, episode number 10. I think I might go for a slightly new look next time. And this is marks the end of the first series of Creative Suite TV. And I will soon be available for you on DVD if you want all 10, not only in iPod resolution, but also in high resolution as well. It's going to be a bargain. So keep an eye out for that on my website as well. Thanks for tuning in and we will see you next time. Woo!